Okay. So, this is a really cool game, and I really like this game, because there was no killing of any groups ever. There was no, like, ridiculous fighting where something could die and something couldn't. It was completely, completely traditional and completely, like, positional, uh, which I really enjoyed. So in the spirit of that, which is also kind of weird because these two players are like pretty aggressive, so it's just kind of weird that this even happened um, so peacefully. But we're going to have a normal enough game to start off. White, black, and white and black. And we see the same thing, well, almost the same thing. Uh, that happened here. Board was facing a different way, but it was basically the same thing. And so the idea is to sort of guess, you know, what sides are the most interesting to play on. That's something that I've been trying to work on um, in my games, and I think it's a really good thing to like try to practice, try to think about, and try to rationalize to yourself, you know, what the reasoning is between um, interesting sides. So if we were to look at this board and for white, you know, white wants to play somewhere. This is where we have to try to balance the expand my own or take away from my opponent's disruption sort of mentality, right? White might like to, you know, you might think, oh, like extend from your four, four stone. Sounds good to me, get out of here. And maybe mirror what black does. The problem with that is that black is always one step ahead of white because black moved first. So whatever move black might want to do, wants to do this, if he wants to start shaking things up right away, he's always one move ahead. And it also makes the game kind of boring, kind of symmetrical. Who wants that, right? So because black is one step ahead, it's white's job to try to disrupt you know, the plan of blacks. And so a good way to do that is to play this move, which disrupts uh, the direction of play, keeps Black's four, two four four stones from being connected or helping each other, right? And uh, is a better move than the approach on the lower side. So now we wanna see what Black can do, right? Um, we have a few, well, and if you are on tie gem, you'll kick. <laughs> If you're on tie gem, it doesn't matter what what situation you're kicking. But we can see that that's not a good move, right? Um, so we can maybe take an enclosure. We can, you know, pincer. Uh, if you're on tie gem, you kick. We can see why that's an issue, right? So if we make right stronger here, or if maybe even if white can go here, you know, now black's corner potential is kind of ruined. White already just kind of messed it up. Sure, he can get an extension here. But these stones can't work together on as large a scale as you would like. Uh, white can maybe play a big point here. Um, this is always really invadable later. Black Tanukis, then this will take that entire corner away. Um, so, you know, that's why we don't really want to play that out, because it's, it's, it's ruining the potential. It's ruining what Black's trying to do. So instead, we see Black Pincer here, making use of the 4 4 stone. Um, as well as, you know, putting pressure on White's group. And here now here's, you know, the next question is, you know, what should White do now? It's a really interesting question, and there's more than one right answer. As we just saw in the review, um, we just saw in the review, this uh, is an option. If, if black wants to do this, um, I guess, like we said before, I think I'd mess the order up on that. Forget it. Pretend that was switched, whatever. And then black does this, right? As we saw before, uh, white has a lot of ways to deal with this. Um, as like we saw in the game review, white can start reducing here. Um, if the ladder works, white can play here, but only if the ladder works. Um, 
you know, you've got moves like this if he wants. So white has ways of dealing with this, or white can just take another enclosure. So so that is okay. Black is good, but also white is good. No real issues. But white wants to do something a little bit different. And so another thing that I've been trying to figure out is, you know, when do you play away in the opening? When do you just drop a stone, be like, I'm going to leave this here, you figure out how to deal with it. Um, and I think one of the most, the simplest ways and scenarios that people do that is when you just play a stone and you get pincered. Idea being is if you do play away, right, black would have to play two moves in this space to kill this. And even with that, there's still forcing moves around. If white wanted to just like do things over here, then maybe use that and as an approach, double approach this way, right? Now his corner's being all weird and that's like kind of helping out somehow. Probably not the best way to continue with that, but the idea is that there's still forcing moves in this stone even when black plays another move here. So to completely remove all the Aji, um, white would get another huge move or probably here or something like that. And black would still need you know, to kill it completely. So if you're looking and trying to figure out when you should play away from stuff, when you get pincered immediately is usually a good place to start. That's like the simplest way I think that people learn. That's the first way that I learned. Uh, we find that white actually does play away, trying to get that advantage, right? We, we know it doesn't make sense for black to keep trying to do something with this because it's going to be over-concentrated. So we see black make a high approach. Uh, works very well with the stone, right? Uh, so no worries there. Now we start getting into a little bit of uh, advanced pro territory <laughs> right now. Um, because, you know, we just said it would be over-concentrated for black to play this way. Because of all the Aji. But if white were to simply play away again here... Black can start building this giant thing, and suddenly this captured white stone is looking, you know, less and less cheap, should we say. If white wants to dive in, black can play this way. You know, can he can do this. Um, and now, like, this is dead. But now, like, look at everything that black got, you know, from this attack. So I think the presence, uh, what I'm interpreting is, as the presence of this stone creates too much potential on this right side for black. As a result, it makes more sense, especially since the corner is still open, to bust this stone out. Uh, I messed up the tree, didn't I? Yeah, I messed up the tree. Darn. I thought I was doing so well, too. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have a messed up tree, and that's okay. And so now we see uh, white bust the stone out. Now we want to ask ourselves, you know, why exactly uh, does white go this way? Because if you've watched a Dwyerin lecture, you know that's not how you should play. It's better to play here and just get points. I think the issue with that um, is even if white does this, this just becomes a little hard uh, for white to invade or to handle or to go into. It might be worth a little bit too much. It might be worth a little bit too much. Ectoplasmus, thank you for following. Welcome to the stream. Um, so that is that is why I think white decided to jump out here. And we know the jump out, so that we don't get our corner surrounded, uh, black is also going to jump out, and now white launches into this. So now instead of, instead of that move that I showed you, we see black start to crawl. White crawls with him, and normally, normally we would see this sort of thing happen. Uh, but I think black is pressed down a little bit too much here. 
or he's just trying to shake things up, so he offers a trade. He uh, hits on this stone, threatens to connect his groups, and so when white responds, black responds in kind, threatens to go out, or threatens to wrap around, because now all these things are becoming less and less you know, important, right? Black can't exchange, you know, be very bad for black to exchange this for like free VIP access into the black's top, right? So that's why we see that. I believe this comes next. Yep. Uh, black defense. And now, uh, because black, you know, can't get disconnected, uh, white turns and threatens to capture these stones. You know, black can't do this because uh, stone doesn't matter. And that's very small. So we see a bit of a trade. Uh, white got some territory, 15 points. <coughs> Black got a huge, huge top, a huge top. But, but, and this is why I think white played this way, this stone right here, right there, is now open. The door is open, open for shenanigans shall I say. And this stone right here is waiting to just completely undercut and take away that corner. So that's why I think white played this way. Let's remove those two. And so now let's keep moving on. And so because of that threat, right, once we start seeing like what sort of distant things these threat, the moves kind of can make sense. Um, that's why we see black get shape for this, right? We don't want to see black passively just be like, okay, I'll defend the door. And then white can just make this like such a sad looking group. It's not even funny. Crunch black down. He's got nice potential, blah, blah, blah. So he tries to do it in a little bit of a dynamic way, forcing white to strengthen. And because black already has an extension here, because black has this move, doesn't need to waste time, and can immediately go for the pincer. So this is going to be really cool to figure out how to handle, because um, this has happened to me. <clears throat> and so I wondered when you know when my stone got hit, you know, is it okay to just extend? Like, is that good? Because I know black can pincer me now. Turns out it is, um, because uh, who was white? Li Chang Ho? Yeah, Li Chang Ho did it. So, pretty sure it's not a bad move. So, how does White deal with this pincer? I guess one way to start. Uh, we could run it out. But now, uh, I don't like that so much. Black is getting like nice potential. He broke White up. Now, White's cornerstone is hurt. So, White decides to counter pincer. <clears throat> which is crazy. I would never have thought of that. But it's really cool, right? Because not only does this mesh with this stone, with the cornerstone, but it threatens a connection, right? Uh, white can connect to these two stones if he wants, because we know the shape. So that prevents black from just capping, right? We can't do this. So essentially, black has to run out. It's not really a choice. And since black has to run out this way, it pushed white in the direction that he wants to go anyway, which is towards these guys. So that's that's the reasoning. So if you have pincered, it's okay. Um, apparently you can run this out. If you've got strength uh, and you got somewhere to run to, um, should be okay. So now we see a high level Don move, a move that I don't play nearly as much as I should play is here. I love this move. It's so cool. <laughs> Threatens to swallow this stone. And do not, do not do this. Because black will do this, white will do this, will do this. And these, there are just so many weaknesses associated with this position. I really someone was like, white tries to cut here. Black can play here. White's cut here, black can play here. White has all these weaknesses if white tries to, you know, run out. 
black needs like white needs a bunch of moves to make this happen black can play here and threaten to capture because we can see that if white doesn't do anything right that captures so you know if white tries to extend down doesn't work tries to go here that's an atari extends down atari throw in which you don't even need to do you can just atari and atari so this is really easy to um have this work out horribly for you and if white tries to like escape here if the ladder works it's it's really great um but black can make this exchange can make a maybe go over here threaten to capture this and now all of a sudden these are getting like a little bit weaker and weaker if white tries to bend here black can go for a split i'm probably not playing out the strongest things that could happen but we can see how many weaknesses that leaves especially because white has to burden these things so if you get in this position, don't do that. And just extend. Just extend. Even extends two spaces. He extended one space. That's how conservative it was. <coughs> so a lot of really cool things. A lot of really cool things. And really no huge fights yet. Like this doesn't look like it's in a huge danger, right? This is out facing the center. No problems. Black plays here to prevent the invasion. Otherwise, white can invade here. It also threatens to uh, link up. Extends out. Right? So that'll be too big for white to allow. But it turns out white doesn't care. I uh, really care about that. He actually plays a bit of a forcing move first threatens to come in under black's points. So black has to respond. Normally, black would respond. Um, but because these are pro games, because these are pro games, uh, black decides to play some forcing moves first because they're really good at reading. And they can see that these groups uh, can be disconnected. And so there's no way white can afford to do that. Like, no way in hell white can afford to um, take away those points just yet. So white has to keep going. Now white, now black can defend. Now we see white start to curl around, facing towards his people, right? Black has a really interesting move here. Um, I think this, this is aiming for a cut. Uh, if white doesn't do anything, black can cut here and here. And then I think this becomes Miai. And I think there might be just enough potential here to do something. Might be just enough. But I think that's aiming at a Mii uh, between these cuts. Uh, in any case, white decides to uh, result here. And so now we've gotten a, a bit of fighting, right? And the moves have been more or less easy to understand. We group, defend it. We group, defend it. We group, defend it. We group, extend from it. We group, defend it. So not much direction of play here, but now it's like a pause. And we're like, okay, I do have a weak group here. That's true. Black is thinking, right? No, yeah, I've got these stones. They don't, they're not the strongest things in the world, but I can't attack this anymore. This attack is done. There's no way I can attack these for profit anymore. If I try to keep attacking or doing something, white can does not care at all. Make more points. Let me worry about this. And it's probably not very attractive for black. So black decides, okay, like, time to do something now. <laughs> Let's do something. Um, question is where? Generally, it's hard to develop the low 4-4, four, four, or like the 4-4 four, four extension, like high 4-4 four, four relationship. So I wouldn't be too worried. So if you had choices, right? I don't know if there hasn't been much chat in a while. But whoever is still here, I don't know if y'all want to take a gander or guess where where you would want to go. I'm going to choose from A, B, or C. In the chat, what do you think? Where do you think 
uh, white went. A, B, or C. What is the best, or black, I'm sorry. Not white, black. What is the best move if black wants the Tanuki to sort of um, break up this uh, left side here? Okay, we've got someone going for A. Someone going for A. Anyone else? Anyone else? We've got one vote for A. <clears throat> Anyone want to uh, think of any more? Also, by the way, this group is, I would not be comfortable leaving this group because I can't read very well. So make sure your groups are strong if you're a beginner. Don't just be like, I'm going to leave this here because <laughs> these are pros. You like B, but it sounds, I am giving no hints, no hints right now. Um, don't do it based on my tone, to be honest. So no one likes C, huh? Anybody a fan of C? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I was going to bring up. Um, I'll give you guys the answer first. Give you guys the answer first, and you guys are going to be very surprised. It's actually C. This is what Black decides to play now. You might be... Very confused, <laughs> very confused um, about why. Uh, I th the reason is, and this is what I'm interpreting the reason is as being, is that we said that this for white is just hard to make into points intrinsically. Like this is just difficult for white to get a lot of points here. So the side is difficult for white to develop just by nature of the fact that like, this is low and far away, and this is high, you know. So then the question becomes, okay, this is intrinsically hard for white to develop in. It might make more sense to play in a place that's easy for white to develop, right? So if we consider black tanukis, right, it seems like white wants to develop here. There's like tons of invasion points. There's invasion points up the wazoo. Black can just like shoot on in. I wants to go up top. Black will like be like, great, no more territory for you. You're all gone. If white plays low, that's kind of unattractive. Black can shoulder hit. Make white crawl along on the third line. Maybe link up with the stones here. Or if he wants to split right away, get some strength up here, then maybe come back. So this is just, the side is difficult. Pick, imagine that with a move like this. In one move, white defended the entire corner versus it would take white like five moves to like fully develop the side. See what the reasoning is? So because white, it's because it's just difficult for white to get traction here, it makes sense for black to invade at the 3-3. Reason being, if we play out the normal Joseki, say white uh, defends this way, we just play normally, right? Now black has this move. Black can just extend up. These stones are right in white's thing, so you can't make a lot of points this way. But we also can't forget that the corner is kind of in trouble. So white has to be careful there. So black can't make anything from this wall because these stones are just sort of breathing down the neck, uh, if that makes sense. And so that's, that's a really interesting thing to me because I would never in a million years have thought that C was the good move to do. And in a recent game review by a strong player, someone again suggested that 3-3 invasion during the middle game. But we're used to believing that the 3-3 is wrong, when in actuality, it's wrong in the beginning. 
because your opponent can make use of the influence. Once the middle game has started and you can calculate, oh, this wall isn't going to be worth a whole lot because I can run out, I've got center strength, blah, blah, blah. Um, then we're okay. Uh, black plays here. We see white gelling completely perfectly uh, with his corner. And white could even invade here right away if he wanted. Um, so, 3 3 is the move. So, you think the other way, right? That's what I would have thought. I would have thought this way. I would have totally thought this way. But white does not do that, which is really interesting to me. Um, white does not play there. He actually defends the other way. Why? Perhaps, again, white sees the fact that this isn't worth a whole lot, right? This is only worth like maybe 11 points. And now black can surround the corner, which is worth a lot more. And I think it might be a little awkward for white to use this wall that he made. Um, if white defends the corner, maybe black in two space, maybe he can defend his shape, threaten to link up. If white decides to split, we get into sort of a black can just like make easy shape here. So I think white thinks it's a little too difficult to do this, and so he decides to actually block this way. <laughs> uh, now keep in mind, you know, it's really easy in pro games to like see all these things and inference these things, but keep in mind these pro games make a living out of playing Go. So many variations are running through their heads, things that we couldn't even comprehend as possibilities or probably possibilities for them. So I think it's good to try to really drill down the basic principles from these moves and try to get things you know we can apply in our games instead of like going crazy trying to calculate every variation ever, right? I think we can really learn from this is seize an option more times than we would think, um, especially when you have a side that's easy to invade. Can white double Hane and take back the corner? You're saying this way? That is risky. I don't think he cannot. Um, well, for one thing, if, 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 if the side was more important to black, black could sack the corner and just make strength here. Yeah, exactly. I just, yeah, funny, I just played that. Um, and now white's cornerstone is still hurt. Uh, this is a little, kind of loses out on a little bit of potential. Um, so I don't think white would double Hana here. <clears throat> In fact, white does neither of those things. Um, I sort of just played that on habit. White actually plays this variation. Uh, this variation is just a quick way for white to get Sente to do something else. And I think the reason, also, another reason like we see white develop this way is because we already said that this is intrinsically hard to develop, this side by nature. So it makes sense for white to just, okay, black, like, you can have the corner. I'm going to have Sente. I'm going to start doing something else with my life, right? Uh, so we see black respond. White comes there. Now we see sort of a counterattack happening. Uh, remember, the counterattack couldn't happen because white black could link up at any point, right? White can't do this because here. And I meant to say that before when I was talking about tanuking away from this group of stones. Sorry for that. Oh, you said bottom side. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just skimmed and, and thought it was left. Yeah. He could take the left too. I almost feel like black getting all those points on the left might be a tad better. Or at least even. Because it's like no one's side versus black side, you know? But uh, that's me. 
I don't know all the variations that really stem from <coughs> all those things. Ah, my voice. My voice. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, so what happens now? So I can't do this because that is a thing forever, right? So white has to do that first. Black's like, okay, game time, trying to make like shape for my group here. And it's still not really fighting, right? It's kind of just pressuring. I know it feels that way. It feels like giving your opponent all that power is really dangerous. But we also have to think about the board, right? Look at how many points black has on the top. Three times, this is 30, plus a giant corner, plus this corner, which is 10. What does white have? This, which is 15, plus this, which is now 15, plus this, which is probably gonna be four, third, you know, something. Black is way ahead in points. Yeah, and the exchange for white getting Sente here is that once black gets Sente again and he feels like it's big, if white Tanukis, um, probably not there, but black can make it even harder for white to do anything on this side. Uh, so white takes. <coughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, he does play this, Mabi. And so that was the exchange, right? White said, okay, I want Sente, so I'm not gonna completely finish this to try to attack this. Black got Sente again, he's like, I think I'm still okay here. Pro level reading, I got this, I'm gonna Hane. And Black gets this exchange. And now no one will ever be able, well, White will never be able to make points in the side for sure now. All done. So now we gotta try to figure out what to do with white. Another interesting part of the game. Black has definitely a lead in points. Definitely a lead in points. <coughs> we can think about this invasion. The issue though, wait, did I do this wrong? I think I did this wrong, wait. Here, here, here. I will probably do this. Yeah, what black has to connect. Problem now is the ladder, which is the usual thing of this variation that happens, doesn't work anymore. Runs right into black stone. Which means the only other way white can try to do something here is to try to do this. But you're you're hurting your corner just as much as you're gaining points, right? So it's kind of an even thing. So White could protect the corner, but then black will probably just play here. And you can't, it's hard to invade there now. So like, what do you do, right? How do you make points as white? How do you make points as white? Because white is very behind. This is worth 12, 20, 18, plus like I said, the 15. Yeah, I mean, you probably wouldn't do it like that. I'm just trying to like, simple ideas, right? E17 instead of F18. What we got? Oh, instead of D18. Wait, E18? F18? F18. Did I play F18? Did I do that? Right. Well, I would probably jump the other way along the top. That's true. Mm -hmm. But I think once white invades here, black can get Sente from this and then rep rip the corner apart. <clears throat> so I don't know if white would want to try something like that yet. 
I think was the basic idea. Because, yeah, I don't know all the variations for this, but I do know that that's a thing. Like, I do know that, you know, if white goes here and the ladder doesn't work, the other variations, generally, black can make bad things happen over here. So, in light of that, what does white do? Well, we can start by trying to attack something, right? <laughs> that helps. This is still not alive yet, by any stretch of the imagination. So there's still a weak group on the board. There's still hope, right? So now we get to see uh, Li Chang Ho's attacking power. See some forcing moves. But once again, it's really hard to kill a weed, which is, oh, I played my stone one space wrong. Stone is here. Sorry about that. Yeah, and now black plays here. And so we can see how hard this is gonna be. Especially because he's kind of running towards his friends over here. Uh, it's gonna be difficult. Uh, white stops this space from easily being made into eyes. Black starts to hurt this stone. So it's getting looking like it's like a little harder and harder to kill. If it were me, as you can see in the game that I played before, probably would have still tried to kill it anyway and died. So, so we said this variation was tough, right? We couldn't just straight up invade here. Turns out there's another move that white can play that uh, also reduces, but doesn't hurt, hurt the corner as much. And that's this move. I'm gonna be very honest, I don't know all of the variations that associate with this move, I haven't studied it. But if you're interested in this move, you definitely should, because it's a really, really cool idea. Um, white, can, white has cross-cut options. If the latter, mm, I don't know if this is the right way. Like I said, I haven't studied this variation. Uh, so I can't really uh, give any sequences, but I definitely want to look it up after seeing this game because I know that it's actually pretty strong. And I know that Black shouldn't haunt it here because he doesn't end the game. <laughs> so <laughs> he actually defends right down here this way. I believe it's because the cross cut is dangerous um, for Black. So. Now, white decides to defend the corner and starts making an attack on this stone, right? Now we can see it if white gets another move. Move here, it's getting a little tough. So black obviously links up, that makes sense. Now his potential is really reduced and white has to make some big plays and big forcing moves, try to get his territory back, so he's going to Threaten to undercut. Black responds. White now presses with the attack. We can see what White's sort of trying to do. He's trying to develop maybe this into points because he has a lot of power here, right? A lot of power. Zelos, thank you for following. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to go. Sente's the name goes the game. Ha, huh. I got the alert on my phone before my Twitch alerts did, so it looked like I was psychic. So there. We can sort of see White's idea. Black still needs life. Playing the double Hane. Black makes sure to connect. And always defend your cutting points, right? Can't keep attacking, gotta make sure that we're safe and almost surrounded, black needs to start making points here. Now this is interesting. This does not look like the biggest move on the board to me. It really does not. I would pick this, I'm trying to make points here. Maybe extend. This feels kind of shot. Can't really make a lot of points now because these two stupid stones are like all up in their face. 
So maybe go here. These are the moons I was thinking. It's very interesting that he thinks this is worth... This is worth more. Super interesting. Hey, it's Chocolate Chip Mint. Thanks for following. You're my favorite flavor of ice cream. Congratulations. Um, I definitely check out my YouTube page. Um, have a lot of great videos uh, for beginners, for Q players. Uh, and probably not for Don players. I'm not there yet. <laughs> so I try to stick to the lower demographic, the less experienced demographic, uh, which I still think is good. Yeah, so check out all my links below the below my Twitch video. Find some cool stuff. S14 is large because that's Sente for black. Really? Sente for black. I mean, that's... Oh, you're saying, like, like if white doesn't do this? That's true. But... I guess that's worth a lot. I could see how that's worth a lot. I could sort of buy it. That's true. All right, so we see white defend here. Now we're into the really crazy pro level counting uh, about like which things are worth more than other things. We see white try to develop, connect, all that good stuff. Black's like no center points for you. White's like, can I invade them? Black's like, no, you can't. White's like, what if I do that? And he's like, still no. Like, okay. I wonder why pros play these. <clears throat> I think they're co-threat moves. I think White's like s maybe setting up co things. Um, only reason I can think for that. White descends. I believe there are cut shenanigans here. <laughs> See, if black tanukis. Might be a little difficult. Probably not this way. That might work. That might be a thing. Yeah, that's true. That'll be co-threats in and of themselves. So there might be cut shenanigans here. Uh, in any case, Black decides to defend it. Pro-level reading again. Black plays that move. End games are so hard to memorize. Cause it's just it's very hard for an amateur to know really what's biggest. But most of the territory is pretty staked out now. Oops, wrong one. Here, here, here. Here. Here, here. And here. And so now we see white starting to try to develop this into points, which is good. Black pokes his head through. How do I get follow notifications on my phone? Uh, they're just email. Like when someone follows me on Twitch, I get an email and I just have an email alert on my phone. So I just see a little email pop up with the Twitch and the name. Oh, white can double Hana here. It's a good point. Oh, not that. We see some more dot probes. We see fills. We see here. We see here. See black defend. And the game proceeds 
pretty uninterestingly. It's really just point grabbing uh, at this stage of the game. Yeah, no. Uh, just make uh, make your phone get emails, have your phone by you, and you can be psychic. You can be psychic too. So then black goes here, and then white goes here. I think there might have been another exchange that I missed. But the end result is really just point grabbing, and we can actually see how many points uh, white decided to get from this. When all said and done, uh, Black got a really nice invasion going. Uh, he reduced this a lot. This is probably the only amount of points that White got in the end. Um, White filled this in, had stuff like this going on. Uh, in the end, though, uh, White was able to cut this, which was really, really good. Really good. So White got this entire bottom. And he, White actually ended up winning by two and a half points. So White ended up winning even when he was really behind. Uh, well, he seemed really behind, right? Way back here. Where did he seem really behind? Here, right? White felt very, very behind, especially after this invasion. But we can see how White kind of developed. First, he's like, I'm going to attack, right? I'm going to make some forcing moves as many as I can. Then he didn't go for a crazy invasion. He just reduced. Protected his points. Very relaxed. I really like this. More pressuring moves, trying to attack in the right direction. Defending big sente moves. <coughs> and the fact that he had this split in his back pocket um, also really helped. It really helped. Yeah, we can see how well white developed from these attacks. It's kind of amazing. Um, that was really strong. Now, like, all these are turning into points. Really sharp moves here. And then this is when I started playing fake moves. Um, but white got all this. Um, so this picked up 6, 30, like 30 points right here. Plus the bottom now is a thing. And then a little bit of the middle. Uh, the middle with these captured black stones end up being a lot. So it's really interesting because he didn't freak out. <clears throat> he played very, very calm attacking moves. Um, he played the forcings when he did, but he protected a lot of his stuff in Gote, which is so crazy to me. What I think is really impressive, really impressive about pros. Um, how you can come behind from a from a subpar position. And so what are some other things that we learned? What about direction of play, right? Why am I just doing that? Just go in the beginning. Duh. So we see that, you know, this is the biggest side for black. White should approach here. We saw that if you get pincered, you can leave it. You know what you're doing. Have a plan. Don't just like leave a pincer and just not know what you're going to do with it. Oh my god. Calm down. And uh, we see white start to develop. And then we see white pay very special attention for where the biggest areas on the board for black were. Right? This started getting very high in potential. Uh, the attack on the stone could profit a lot. So he's going to start trying to mess that up. We saw white deal with this by pincering back, extending from that cornerstone. <clears throat> the fact that this is intrinsically can be connected means that black cannot cap here, which is really good. Led white out, 
White did not try to do this. Please never, ever do that. Never, ever do that. Don't do that. Um, we see White not go crazy, try to attack this group immediately. And then we see Black pick a really great spot uh, to invade, even though none of us would probably think it's a great spot to invade. We saw White exchange side ceiling for an attack. And those are the repercussions. And now, now White's behind, and we see him start to calmly develop his points. So if we do a count, right? 1, 2, 3, 10, 8, 12, 20. So it's 30. This is 30. 60. We'll give him 10 here. 70. White's corner, I'm going to say 15. 20. So this is like 35. Fifteen, fifty-five ish So white's definitely behind. Uh, but we see white start to develop strength in the center from his attacks, make light reducing moves, like I just said, and uh, develop a really nice position over here and over here, and still mind uh, the forcing moves and mind his territory that he had already. And in the end, managed to get most of this, most of this, and all of this. So... It worked out. <clears throat> Both played really well. So I hope that uh, gave you guys some cool ideas about direction of play, about maybe when you can tanuki versus when you can't tanuki, not saying that I know how to do it yet. <laughs> it's uh, definitely stuff to practice and definitely things to try to get good at.